Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Car Chronicles Reviews with the Less Than Stealthy Ninjas. But right now, it's the Lone Ninja, Scootaloo. And shout out to Cosmic Boss to run your miss. And right now, I am here with a good friend of mine, Sha. Say what's up, Sha. Way to the people. Um, we are here to discuss Creed 3. Yes. Starring Michael B. Jordan, Jonathan Majors, Tessa Thompson, and others. Um, it's the third one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the third one of the Creed trilogy. But it's like all in all, what, the eighth, ninth Rocky movie all together? Something like that? Number 10? I think it was six Rocky movies. But it's like the eighth or ninth movie in the whole Rocky franchise. Um, this video will have some small spoilers. We're not going to try to spoil major, major things. But there will be some light spoilers. So prepare. So I guess first things first, uh, Sha, what do you think about the movie overall? I think it was a it was a good movie. I would watch it again definitely. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Uh, it wasn't a bad movie. I say out of the three, I will say this is probably the best one, considering I just recently watched all the Creed movies to catch up because I have not seen them prior until uh, a week ago. So okay. they fresh. Um, so I definitely think the third one to me is the best. Um, they veered the story a little bit in the way they did it um, because this movie did go through a little bit of controversy. They, I don't know if the studio ousted Sylvester Stallone out or what, but you know, Rocky's character is not in here. Um, hell, he was barely even mentioned. At all. Like, they barely even uh, mentioned Rocky, which was, like, crazy, because it was like, damn, like, nothing? Like, Rocky's back in Philly, you know, hey, how's Rocky doing? It was nothing. Nothing. But, um, the movie does open up, going back in time, to show uh, Adonis' character with Damien. Then, an incident happens. Then it cuts to Adonis having his last fight. Creed, he was going against Ricky Conlon, the guy he fought in the first one. And I mean, like I said, mild spoilers. He wins. And basically, he retires as the best boxer in the world. And then the movie jumps again to now, where he's retired. You know, he's running things on the opposite end. Um, little girls growing up. I think she's about eight or nine. Maybe 10? She was 11. She was 11? Maybe I missed that. Maybe I missed that. I don't know. I forgot how old, but the movie time jumps enough to where the little kid has grown up that they had at the end of two. Uh, Tessa Thompson's character, which I totally forgot her name in the movie. She's now a producer and a writer. She She stopped doing music because if you remember... Her hearing was slowly going. So she's now on the opposite. She's on the other end of it. And then uh, we see that uh, Rocky and mainly Duke, if y'all remember Duke, he was the trainer at the uh, gym. They, they, their, their gym houses the heavyweight champion, uh, Felix. I forgot last name. And he's supposed to fight Victor Drago in a main event heavyweight fight. Now, if y'all seen Creed 2, Y'all seen how buff Victor Drago was? Yes. The champ? <laughs> nah. There's, there's no way he was a heavyweight. No way. Now, okay, okay. Now, if heavyweight means you're just more than... If you're tall. If you're more than a certain weight, then he probably was barely over that weight. Because once again, Victor Drago... And this guy is like Brock Lesnar. And I say Randy Orton. Yeah, Randy Orton, you know, slim, 6'4", but Brock Lesnar, 6'5", 265. Yep. And, yeah, you can, you can, you can 100% tell that whatever was going to happen, happened. So we know that fight's supposed to happen. 
And then uh, Damien is out. He runs into Adonis as the scene you saw in the trailer where he was leaning on the car and everything. They kind of get back to it. Adonis, not Adonis, um, Damien is basically telling Creed, I want a box. Like, I want to be the heavyweight champion. You know, I don't have much time left. You know, make something happen. And he's telling him, man, that's not how the things work. But we're going to try to get it figured out. You know what I'm saying? We're going to try to figure it out. Uh, some things happen. Drago can't fight. So <laughs> the, all the while he was telling him that's not how things happen, which is exactly what happened in the first one, because Creed had won one televised fight. And now he was fighting for the world championship. But Damien, he gets his shot. He wins. Uh, so now he's the world champ. And this is where kind of the movie gets a little weird because everything happens so fast. Yeah. Like, Damien becomes world champ. He kind of turns on Creed. Creed starts to spiral. Some other things we don't want to spoil happens, and it just moves so fast. Like it just do, 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 do. And it was like, wait, can the man get a time to process? Like, I don't think he had time to even process everything. And and he was just so he like he was so easily goaded. Like Apparently, Damien was all around town, all over magazines, and whoever would listen to him, bad talking Creed and this, that, and the third. And it was like, hey, yo, man, you know, a lot of people, man, they don't know how they feel about you and everything. And it was like, you didn't even know Damien. Two days ago. Two days ago. <laughs> and now y'all listening to this, man. <laughs> but so just how we. Just because he got the belt. Just because he got the belt, you know. So how, how how did you feel about the whole fast tracking of everything and how fast everything just went? So to me, it was just like thing after thing after thing, and it was like, okay, wait, take a take a take a, take two seconds just to explain how do we get to this part? And it was just like it was so fast paced that I don't know, like. Yes, <laughs> you, you got it. You got this. But yes, it was so fast-paced and it was so just crazy. And then it was like, all right, Creed's going on first take with Stephen A. Smith and he has an announcement to make. Which is crazy because he's never done an interview like that before. First time being on first take. First time. So the whole time he's supposed to be this world-renowned best fighter in the world. And he never been on first take or done an interview like that before. It's like, how, fam? Then the funny part is, which it just dawned on me, Damien calls into first take. And I'm thinking to myself, how did he have the number? How did he have the number? How did he, did he get in so quick? How did he have ESPN's number to call in the first take? He got it on speed down. And him and, and Creed and Damien trash talking on the phone. He was like, well, I'm going to challenge you for the world title. Run it, run it, run it. We're going to do this. And then boom, interview over. Now, funny enough, he told him things don't work this way. But things were working this way. Down to the teeth. Funny enough, some of the plot holes because the champ, who was originally champ, he lost. Didn't say anything about a rematch. Victor Drago didn't say anything about him getting his title shot. But boom, Creed just leapfrogs all of them. I'm getting the I'm getting the world heavyweight championship. And it was like, okay. I guess that's how you work when you're the best boxer in the world. Yep. And then of course we get training montages and we get to the main fight. And I remember Michael B. Jordan in his interview said that uh, there was a lot of anime influences in the fights. You can definitely see it, especially in the first fight. There were some very anime moments. And in this fight, 
I thought this whole final fight was like a masterpiece. Like the way it was going, the cinematography the, the cinematography of it, the uh what they did in the fight, because I don't want to spoil how they did it, but it was it was a moment that they did something special. And but the fight went all 12 rounds. And it was a duel. But all in all, like I said, the movie was good. It was it was very interestingly it was done interestingly considering how everything was just so fast track but the movie was good um i definitely give it like a good seven or eight out of ten i would say it's about a seven and a half seven and a half so yeah uh from the fighting aspect more so than the storytelling aspect yes yes if the if the storytelling was a little bit better then it would have been higher yes um for those who hadn't seen Creed 1 and 2, it's okay. Like, other than knowing Ricky Conlon and other than knowing Victor Drago, that was it. And, like, that was it. Like, there was really no references or nothing that they said or truly done that would really made you need, that would make you go watch 1 and 2, other than Conlon and Drago being in it. Um, I do like the use of learning sign language, because, like, after watching this movie, it was like, man, I really want to learn sign language. That was a, a good, it, it, like, interesting part of it. Yes, because to spoil some bits of two, the daughter was born with a hearing problem, and ended up being completely deaf to where, you know, now in three, we see that they have to talk to her solely in sign language. Um, I really forgot Chester's name. I thought I was about to get ready to say it right there and there. But she still has what's left of her hearing. But they still, you know, talk and sign and this and the other. And, you know, it was a lot of great moments because it was some character building with the daughter. It was some character building within Creed. Um, Jonathan Majors was a great villain, even though he was a villain through circumstance. Like he was a villain through circumstance and a villain through, through, yeah, just villain through circumstance. Because you can you can sort of kind of feel for him too, because it wasn't like you know he was just I'm coming in I'm the bad guy rah rah rah. No, it was reasons he felt this way. So. And I feel like they kind of could have took a more. They could have jumped into that just a little bit more than what they did. I can agree. I feel like they kind of glazed over. Yeah, I can agree. It was like, because like even there was references that this man got the world's biggest chip on his shoulder and this and the other. But it was like, tell us why. Like, we know he got out of prison and y'all were kind of telling it in pieces. But, you know go into that psyche more of a man who lost 18 years of his life. Because to me, it seemed like he didn't really lose 18, maybe like two, and then came out, came to world camp, and it was like... You know, so, but and once again, Jonathan Majors, he he he, he looked like a heavyweight. <laughs> he did his part. <laughs> he did his part, because even when it was uh, Jonathan Majors and Michael B. Jordan and they was going against each other, it was like, there's a very simple, there's a very, very, very big size difference here, but especially, yeah. especially with, with Felix too. Especially with Felix, like I said, I don't I would have loved for that fight to happen because I really would have loved to see Felix going up against Drago because that size difference was crazy. I don't know, because he was so confident. And then and then his mom was, you know, hyping him up. So I mean number one fan. So he was confident. I, I, you know, if, if, if Felix would have believed he would have won, Felix would have won. How about that? True. But uh, yeah, that was Creed 3. Go check it out. You don't need to see 1 and 2. You can literally just watch 3 and not be lost. I say see it. I say see it. So there you go. Um, of course, you know where to find us. I'm going I'm to I'm put it up here and let you know. You know, you can find us at all those different spots. Shout outs to the other two, Araya, Boss. Uh, Shy, you want to give out any uh, shout outs to the people out there? Um, shout out to 
I like the way you geared up for it as if you about to just round it off and it was like, nobody. No, shout out to my family. Love you guys. I don't know. Like, that was just, was just like, shout out to like I got thought she was about to just round that shit off. Like shout out to uh, 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 uh. I was gonna say a whole bunch of names, but I mean, Sam, I don't know. Tell them. I how you get your people <laughs> Wow, and you know what's funny? That's what Damien thought that he was forgot about. See how they just all went in full circle, <laughs> and that's how we do it. Until next time, everybody. Peace. Thank y'all for watching. Like, subscribe. All that you know. Yeah, y'all know what to do. Thank y'all for tuning in. Till next time. Peace.